any sense at all. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, with that, operator, if you can instruct our listeners on how to ask a question. Yes, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you have a question, please press the number one key on your phone. Again, to ask a question at this time, please press the number one key on your phone now. Okay, please hold while we allow questions to come into queue. Again, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you have a question, please press the number one key on your phone. Okay. Our first question will come from Bob Castani with NBC News Radio. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, hi, guys. Um, Ed, in particular, um, the Obama administration's response to this would be that even in this, uh, with the, the economic situation being the way it was, it is, uh, a number of people who have uh, in the past, made a lot of money, a lot of skills, or whatever, are still having trouble finding work, and um, you know, are, are unemployed for more than two years, etc. And uh, let alone uh, those who have lesser skills. What is your response to this? I mean, they, they they would assume that you know states need these waivers because people are having such a difficult time finding work. Well, I don't know who they're citing in terms of states asking for uh, waiver of the of the work requirements. Uh, and the fact is that uh, the length of and the duration of unemployment, the dearth of jobs, uh, the 8.3% the unemployment rate, the increase in uh, people living in poverty is a result of President Obama's uh, failed policies. Shouldn't compound those with further uh, wrongful policies, and that's what he's doing here. Okay, our next question will come from Sarah Murray with Wall Street Journal. Please go ahead. Hi guys, thanks for doing the call. Um, my question on this is that you know the waivers actually do include work requirements, and they include evaluations saying you have to meet you know your certain employment goals that you set. So I guess I'm confused about you guys saying that it gets rid of work requirements entirely because that's not the case. Yeah, hi, this is John Burks. I'll take that. Um, if you look at the um, uh, memorandum issued by the um, uh, Department of Health and Human Services, uh, one of the items in which they express their willingness to issue waivers is um, uh, demonstrate um, uh, projects that demonstrate attainment of superior employment outcomes in lieu of participation rate requirements. And so, in other words, uh, that's exactly the uh, core of the welfare requirement is the or the welfare to work requirement is that uh, states meet their participation rate thresholds. And so, they are expressing their willingness to waive that requirement, um, which is. Um, exactly what we're talking about here today. Okay, and our next question will come from John Hayward with Human Events. Please go ahead. Hello. Do we have an estimate of the likely cost of these new rules, how much this is going to add to the cost of the welfare program by removing these requirements? Uh, this is John again. I, I, we don't because uh, at the end of the day, this is something that a state would actually have to ask um, uh, the federal government to um, uh, to waive these requirements. And um, as Ed noted, um, you know, we've not seen any states come forward and, and be willing to um, uh, do their part in undoing this uh, bipartisan uh, co uh, the bipartisan consensus in favor of welfare to work. Okay, our next question will come from Jim Engel with Fox News. Please go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, one of the reasons the administration cited were requests from Utah and Nevada um, that they claim uh, were seeking the kinds of waivers they are offering. What is your view of that? Yeah, um, the uh, Utah Governor Herbert has actually put out a statement and also sent a letter to um, HHS making clear that um, while they were seeking um, increased flexibility in how they administer their TANF program, they were not seeking a, a waiver of the core work requirement, um, and uh, Nevada has made um, similar statements. So, you know, the fact is that uh, the Obama administration took um, this, the governor's reasonable um, uh, request for increased flexibility in how they manage their TANF um, program and used it as an opportunity to try to um, sneak through a, a gutting of the core welfare-to-work requirement.
Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question at this time, please press the number one key on your phone. Our next question will come from Steve Holland with Reuters. Please go ahead. Hey, uh, thanks for doing a call. Could you could you all put out these uh, the HHS memo and the letters from the uh, the governors? Uh, and and you know the Obama campaign is saying that, uh, that that Governor Romney sought this sort of flexibility as governor of Massachusetts. Is is that a fact? And and how big is your ad buy on this the ad you put out? Um, well, let me uh, speak to the HHS memo. It, it's uh, publicly available, and I'm sure our, our press shop can get the um, get it to you as well. Um, and the uh, l- statements from the, the governors too. On the um, uh, there's a 2005 letter that um, the Obama uh, folks have been referring to that Governor Romney signed together with uh, several other Republican governors. That letter was commenting on a Senate reauthorization of the welfare program. Um, that was uh, pending at the time, and that Senate bill actually increased work requirements from 50% participation rates to 70% participation rates and provided increased um, uh, flexibility in other areas for uh, states and how they administer their TANF program, but it did not um, uh, provide a waiver of the core uh, work requirement, um, and the governors uh, were not requesting um, a waiver of that core work requirement, and um, Governor Romney, in fact, had uh, vetoed legislation that would have uh, weakened Massachusetts' work requirements. So, um, you know, just, uh, again, just sort of throwing up smoke to try to obscure the fact that um, President Obama has always been opposed to uh, the strong work requirement in welfare and uh, was trying to take an opportunity to to gut that um, requirement. And, Steve, as for the uh, ad buys, you know, we don't uh, put out our ad buys and uh, release points and that kind of uh, thing, but I can assure you that people are going to uh, see this ad. Great. And operator, we probably have time for one more question. Okay. Our final question will come from Megan McCarthy with the National Journal. Please you go are. ahead. Hi. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I, I want to ask if this is a, kind of a, at odds with the Governor Romney's position and a, kind of a general Republican position that states should have the flexibility to administer these uh, programs as as a, best they can without the federal government getting involved in all of these specific details. And Medicaid comes to mind or even uh, the implementing of the health care law, um, HHS has tried to give a lot of flexibility on that. So how do you guys reconcile that, that you want these federal uh, regulations enforced strictly on the states? Well, there's a difference between flexibility and a blank check. Um, essentially, what the Obama administration is trying to do is turn the welfare, um, the TANF block grant, into a blank check by removing the one inviolable federal requirement, which is that um, a certain percentage of the uh, welfare beneficiary population has to participate in work. Um, and so there's nothing inconsistent with giving states flexibility in how they manage their programs um, as long as they meet this core requirement of the of the federal program. It would be as if, um, you know, giving states a, a Medicare, Medicaid block grant um, but didn't require them to actually provide health care to anyone. Great. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on the call. Um, Steve, I can get you that information, or if anybody else has uh, follow-up questions or requests, please let me know. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes your call. You may all disconnect at this time.